Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today, we are going to channel Muhammad Ali from the afterlife, the famous American boxer. Now, I did post on the community tab here at Above Life Channel a request from you to, or a request for you rather from me, for questions. I just felt this urge to channel Muhammad Ali and I wasn't sure what to ask him. So you guys have submitted some questions. So thank you for that. Also, I will be looking at questions from the Above Life channel Facebook page to ask Muhammad Ali. All right, come on in. All right, yeah, he comes on. He's walking just fine, everyone, in case you were wondering and he looks healthy rather healthy he's got like a long white kind of silvery white uh, like a track jacket on that falls below the waist it's like kind of at you know below the hips kind of thing so it's longer on the top and then the bottom it's like the same kind of silvery white jack uh white pants i can't tell if it's silver or white because i can't kind of it looks iridescent almost and then there's a big stripe down the side of it so and it's got like red the stripe has yeah, kind of like a red and then a little bit of a like a navy blue somewhere on here too. There's like a symbol here. So um, it's not like those robes that they put on for boxers. It's not like that. It's different. It's like a track suit kind of a thing. So, all right. So thank you for being here. And I know you have children. I know you have a daughter. I think it's Layla. It begins with an L. I think her name begins. I think her name begins with an L. I'm thinking I remember that. And she um, was also a boxer into boxing. And it feels like now she either does personal training or almost it's like a, um, she's a definitely an athlete, but it feels like she does like maybe more personal training and that kind of a thing, like coaching kind of vibe is what I get from her. Um, from Muhammad Ali to his daughter. I think it's like Layla. That's what, that's what it feels like, you guys. I can't quite see the spelling of it, but I see the L in it. And it's got an A in it and all that jazz. Okay, so let's get to the questions that folks have asked. So let's see. Ooh, this is a good one right out of the gate here. Muhammad Ali, will you return for a future lifetime? Gina asks this question. If so, will you take up boxing again? I'm curious to ask the question because I know how much, how much the sport of boxing can take a toll on a person's mental agility and their physical body causing damage damaging health issues at a later age so will you return for a future lifetime he kind of rubs his hands on his legs and he says i'll consider it i'll consider it I, i'd i'd consider it he says as far as boxing i don't know i might want to do something different he says i might want to do something different and he gives me like race car driving <laughs> You know, like, and then he kind of jokes with me, like, would that be any less dangerous? Would that, that be any less, um, um, any less risk of inflicting bodily harm? And he says, ah. So, all right, thank you. Thanks, Gina, for that question. All right. Here's another one. We're going deep, Muhammad Ali. We're going deep. All right, so... What was the most challenging thing about your human experience? <laughs> it says, trying to keep it all together. I think there's a natural, he says, there's a natural part of life that you got to deal with the ups and the downs, the, the struggles, and you make sacrifices and you make choices to get to where you know you need to be. It's a, it's like a calling. It's a, it's a, it's something that's so stronger than yourself. It's a, it's a higher purpose, a higher evolution. And um, there's just some, some kind of a, he's like making me feel like he's keep, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going energy. And he says, over time, that, that wears you down. It wears you down. It wears your physical body down. It wears your physical body down. And... If there's breakdowns in, in the body. And yes, I know, he says, yes, I know, I know, I know the human body is a miracle, it's miraculous, it's miraculous. And I know because I've healed many, many, many times. I've seen it heal many, many, many times. 
but you get to a point where you can only take so much. So what is the most challenging part of that then, would you say? He kind of, he leans back, he says, it's not the Parkinson's. It wasn't the Parkinson's. Despite what you may believe, he says, I abused my body. I abused it. I didn't stop when I maybe should have. But that's not in my nature. It's not my nature to quit or to give up or to stop. It's not in my nature. He's making me feel like he retired and came back. And I don't remember you guys. I know you, some of you who are new to Above Life channel get really frustrated <laughs> when I say, I don't remember or I don't know. But I don't. <laughs> I don't. I'm channeling. I'm talking to Muhammad Ali. I'm not thinking about factual stuff. All right, so he's making me feel like he he started, he had a break, then he came back, and then and maybe even twice, and then he almost like retired and then came back again or something like that. And so he said the damage was done. The damage was done. It's hard to give up, he says. It's hard to give up. That's perhaps one of, I think, me, Bridget, I think that's one of his biggest challenges and what it feels like to me is, is knowing when to stop, knowing when to quit, and to get, give up, to be done. You know, it, it feels like he just never, there was no end for him. It was always a going thing. It was always constant going, 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 going. And the body couldn't take it is what he's, she's sharing. All right. Thank you. That question was from Evan. All right. Let's see what else we have. Let's see. This is an interesting question. Okay, so Samantha asks, Hi, Mr. Ali. I have so much respect for you. I grew up watching your fights. He says, oh, thank you, Samantha. Thank you. He says, oh, thank you. And then she asks, what do you think of the world of boxing today? That's her first question. She's got a couple, so that's a good one. That's a good one. I don't really watch boxing, so I don't know. He says, oh, you want, yeah, you wouldn't like it. You know, it's different. It's different. There's different um, offshoots. Like he's showing me different offshoots of boxing. It's, it's kind of turned into lots of different things. And he says, um, it's part entertainment and part what the body can endure. It's part entertainment and part like athleticism is the word I wanna use, but he's not using that. He's saying part of what your body can endure. It's an endurance. It's an endurance. And now it seems like, like he's saying like now it seems so, um, so I'm gonna use this word. I don't know if this is the right exact word, but he says uh, like commercialized. It's really highly commercialized. And he says, not, not that there wasn't like betting going on back in the day or not that there wasn't that. There was still, you know, TVs and all that, television and all that. There was still that, that kind of business part of it, business part of it. But now it's, you have to be really, your body's like a machine and the whole mind over matter thing, it doesn't, it, it's different now, it's different. You have to be real flexible. You have to have um, the ability to really understand from a, a perspective that's, it's different, it's different. Yeah, yeah, he says, yeah, 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 it's different. Uh, so the extreme, isn't there like extreme fighting and stuff that happens and different kinds of fighting? I know that there's that kind of thing out there. I'm not sure. And then there's also like the professional wrestling and all that kind of stuff. And he said, it's different. It's different now than it, than it was before. But there are, he said, there are still people who love the art. He's saying Oscar, Oscar de la Hoya. Is he a boxer? Oh boy, do I sound like a ding dong. Yeah, he's like, yeah, Oscar de la Hoya. Um, 
somebody else that looks really young, um, a younger man that's been compared to him, to Oscar. And then he says somebody named Sid, I don't know who that is. Um, Sid, Sidney, Sid, Sid something. Okay, um, let me ask the next question here. What would you change? Um, would you change anything about it, about boxing today? There's places where they teach the old school, you know, the, it's a mental, it's a mental uh, experience as much as it is a physical experience. And there's places where gyms, where they uh, train, and they teach the mental aspects of it. There's, there's different and unique ways to train that you could really, you have to be mentally prepared for it and really uh, understand that part and the connection between the mind and the body and the working together of it all, the, that you would say that alignment, but I would say the rhythm of it, the rhythm of it has to be something that You can teach about the importance of these these parts, but somebody's got to be natural. You know, they have to they have to be a natural at it. There there are some that just 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 have that kind of sway. They can they just it's just a, in, instinctive to them. You know, it's natural. It's natural to them. I can't say that I would nest. Um, He's not saying like offering any like how you would change it or anything like that. It, it feels like maybe going back old school a little bit and giving some of the, the, the real understanding of the mind. That's how it feels to me to answer your question, Samantha. All right. Okay. All right. So next question. How did you feel when you, were found, when you found out that you were diagnosed with Parkinson's? This comes from Christine. It's not really much to say about it. It was nice to know what was going on, but you, have, you gotta understand that I didn't really, I didn't really expect to have something like a disease. A, I didn't expect to have a, like a diagnosis, I think he's saying. I just, I, I really felt like it was just my body just, after years of, of abuse on it, that it just was given out. That's, I, didn't, I didn't really think about the, the muscle spasms. The, the most difficult part about it is the, the muscle pain. You know, your muscle gets hard as like a rock and it won't, it, it can't loosen up and it just shakes. And uh, there's a lot of discomfort in that. There's a lot of pain. And then the joints too, there's a part where the 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 bones come together and the joints just it's like a chattering you know like a teeth chattering it just aches it's really it's really hard to explain it um it's like you're in a prison of your body and i'm not exaggerating that that's that's how it feels that's how it feels wow okay oh that's powerful all right so let's go to our facebook page and take a look here on above life channel facebook i posted a, this question asking for questions so let's see if we've got a few for you muhammad ali famous boxer extraordinaire <laughs> all right so let's see, we've got, oh, we've got a few questions, good. Oh, Chris asks, what did you learn from your illness later in life? Again, asking about the Parkinson's diagnosis. What did you learn from it? I wouldn't change a thing. I would not have changed my behavior or my training or my career, I would not have changed a thing. I hope that makes people feel better. Maybe that may, that'll make people feel better. I would not have changed a thing, he says. He's like, he is kind of like, he does move like freely, really freely. Just his mannerisms and things. He's kind of flowing. He's not, 
he's not portraying the um, characteristics or traits of Parkinson's, but he's like he's very fluid. Like he feels really flexible and very kind of flowing in his energy. I just want I want to articulate that to you because I feel like it's important to honor. Muhammad Ali's energy by sharing that with you, how he feels and what he looks like energetically to me. Okay. All right. So let's see. <laughs> oh, Tom on Facebook comments. I'm just laughing at your comment, Tom, on Facebook. I'm not going to share it here. It's a little political, but it's funny. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. Got to have a sense of humor, right? He says, absolutely. That's Muhammad Ali. He says, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so let's see. Ah, oh, this is a great question. Vicki asks, now that you have passed, which faith is the closest to the truth? Wow, like that's a million dollar question, isn't it? He says, ah. Oh. He says, hmm. He says, that's a personal choice. There's not one above another. There's only one. There's only one. And what he's referring to, you guys, is like one God, one universe, one consciousness, us. He's referring to us. And he knows that I know that that's what that means. He just says there's only one. There's only one. He holds up his finger. It's only one. Good question. <laughs> Lori asks, do you still float like a butterfly and sting like a bee? <laughs> uh, he says, I might, I might. <laughs> All right. Oh, this is an interesting question. Interesting question. So Suzanne from Australia asks, Muhammad Ali, asks um, your thoughts about the impact on Parkinson's when you found out you had it, which you already responded to. So we're going to ask the next part of her question, which is, um, can you speak briefly about if this was written in your blueprint before you came to earth. So this is talking about like pre-incarnation, not reincarnation, pre-incarnation. Did you, was that a part of the plan for you? He says, I don't know, I don't know if I can speak to that. Not, not in the way you're asking it. Not in the way you're asking, the way you're, you're thinking in your mind about it. No, not in that way. It doesn't, it doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. It's not a direct relationship. It's not a specific plan. Your identity is what you create of it in your identity is what you create of it. Can you say that again? Because I, I'm feeling, mm, this is interesting, you guys. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I'm feeling two levels of Muhammad Ali. I'm feeling Muhammad Ali from what we know of him as the boxer. And then I'm feeling this like higher consciousness of Muhammad Ali. Perhaps it's because you had two names, maybe. Mm -hmm. You might be right. All right, so let's ask this question of, the higher self version, Muhammad Ali, of you, and see if there's any, is that what I'm seeing? Absolutely. He's like, yes. He says, thank you for recognizing that. Thank you for seeing that. Thank you for seeing that, he says. So let's talk at a higher consciousness then. Let's up level, you guys. Come on, let's up level. Come on, everybody breathe with me. Let's up level this game. Come on. It gets so boring just talking about human life stuff. Let's learn about the higher consciousness. Come on, guys, take a breath with me. Clear out any resistance you might have. And feel the energy. Ah, oh, that's much better. I can feel them really clear now. That's much better. Thank you. Oh, that was awesome. Okay, so talk about this blueprint before you incarnate. So pre-incarnation. It doesn't work 
in the way that you think it works. There is a much more streamlined process. There's a flow to things, a rhythm in life where you can engage and interact and connect with things. It's, it's pretty exciting, actually. If you can access the higher planes of consciousness, you would understand this. And so the bee and the butterfly, not that far apart. They work together. And these metaphors or analogies or the talk that comes has deeper meaning. Go back and look, go back and look and see if you can see the higher consciousness flowing through my mouth. See if you can. And then I challenge you, I challenge each and every one of you to let that higher consciousness flow through you, through your mouth, through your words, through your actions, because that's how life's gonna change for you, for the better, for everybody else in your neighborhood, your community, and your world. And that's what it's gonna to take to make a difference. That's what it's gonna to take to make life more fulfilling and successful for you. Okay. Whoa. Well, okay, everybody, you got that? Did you listen? Did you listen to that, Mr. Muhammad Ali? All right, can you talk to us a bit about the name change? Did you come into a place where Cassius transformed into Muhammad, and what was that about? Was that about religion or faith, or is that about something different? Help us to understand in our little human minds this from your higher consciousness level. Absolutely, absolutely. I was granted the power of grace and the opportunity to, to put myself into alignment with, with what I believe to be true and real and powerful, what I believe to be my work through this body became so much more important to me at a higher level of being, you would say, consciousness. And being conscious called me to be a higher version of myself. And I recognize the way God would see me, perceive me. And when I use the word God, I mean one. I mean all and one. Which you will not be able to understand, I know, because I didn't, I'm not saying I understood that. But I knew, I knew in my heart, in my soul, at the depth of me, that I was I was in a purpose, I was serving a purpose. And the name that I chose for myself was not a disrespect to my family, to my heritage, heritage, family, lineage, background is what he's saying. But a call to recognize, to accept and receive that higher purpose for my life. And that is what that was about. It was not about one way of being, it was about a higher, higher connection, consciousness. He's saying higher, higher understanding that in my human life, I wanted so much. I craved it. I craved it. And only now, now could I ever be in the true understanding of that. I don't expect you to know or to understand it. It's, it's my path, mine. Okay, there's other questions here. I can barely like read this. Wow, a lot of more questions about the body and Parkinson's and, oh, here's a beautiful, beautiful question to wrap on. All right. Jean asks, lighting the Olympic flame, just what was that like? She says, I cried. I watched that. My father had two, I don't know. Oh, Parkinson's too. Parkinson's disease too. Amazing moment in life, it seems. It says, yeah. The eternal flame. It says, yeah. It's not as much about accomplishment or triumph. 
as it is about the eternal, the eternal spirit. He says, the eternal spirit lives on, lives through you, lives in, in all of you. Yeah, that's what he's saying, the eternal spirit. That's what that flame represented to him, the eternal spirit. All right, you guys, I'm Bridget. Thank you so much for watching this conversation in the afterlife. And thanks for your questions for Muhammad Ali. Thank you so much for being here and for inspiring our spirits, for giving us hope. And remember everyone, this is your life. It's yours. And your job is to live it. Just live it. Make sure you click like and subscribe to the channel so you never miss a weekly channeling session here at Above Life Channel. Be sure to follow me on social media at Above Life Channel, Bridget Inspired on Facebook, and also Bridget Inspired on Instagram. If you like vlogs and you're interested in that, you can check me out at Fairy Grasshopper Channel, my vlogging channel. Thanks so much for being here.